chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Orbit. What? Then name the system Orbit. Loki religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good flight. Sparks are coming up on Alderaan. You may fire when ready. Welcome to Alderaan Explosion, the Explosion Network's official countdown to Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. It is seven days, one week until release. My name's Elm Blight, your Jedi Master, and joining me, my part of ones, Ashley Hobley. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here in the last pre-Rise of Skywalker episode. It's like being in 1999 when you're about to enter the 2000s. Yeah, we're precipice. gonna party like it's. Well, we're not gonna party. We're just gonna wait in anticipation, like it's <laughs> 1999. Like it's 1999. Uh, also, Kira Marchin. Hi, it's me. It's it's yeah. I'm here. Good intro. Very good. Yep. You're you're welcome. I'm really just jumped still- in. I'm like you know, I really, really thought about this. You know, it's it's you know, I'm just here. If you're you still with us after that high integrity of um, energy, uh, well done. So this week we are <laughs> having our final discussion prior to watching the movie, of course. It is one week away. I find it very hard to believe. Honestly, as I was like got, getting ready this morning, to knew that was recording this today, I was like, wow. Honestly, I know it's like obviously years ago, but honestly, I feel like it was only like not long ago that I was in line for the midnight release of The Force Awakens. And now we're like at the end of the trilogy and it's of course it's been many many years but i don't actually feel like it's been that long you know it's just one of those things it doesn't feel like it's actually been that long but it's also one of those weird things where i think about like where i was in my life when the force awakens came (laughs) where i am in my life when this happens and i can like see a huge (laughs) there's like there's a humongous trajectory of like life change that's happened over those periods of time so it's one of those interesting things it's crazy you don't One look thing. like a homeless person anymore. It's uh, it's you. You look quite respectable. I was cosplaying for Luke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what so a was, disappointment that would have been! You're like, wait, no, I'm going to be Luke. He's going to be all over this movie. Last five seconds is in the yeah. film. It looks nothing Very like what you looked like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because um, <laughs> the other funny thing I had that I ne- nearly was going to find for this for this one for for the jokes was I brought a shirt off Redbubble for the the first movie that just had like uh, it was supposed to be like J.J. Abrams' face, but it was like his glasses and like his hair, so you could like like that style, like whatever yeah. thing, um, silhouette type thing, which was stolen from many looks on Explosion Network. Um, the the silhouette type thing of J.J. Abrams, and just below it said, "Help us, J.J. You're our only hope," and that was my. Short, shared I wore to, which I thought was quite funny because it was in line for the midnight I mean, release, and then one guy was like, "What's your shirt say?" And he re- laughed. So, so it's a certain per- portion of the audience that still works. Yeah, exactly. But that's the reason I don't want to wear it because <laughs> <'cause laughs> it, it, it makes it, it makes it seem like I hate Last Jedi, obviously. But but I, even when I wore it, I didn't hate the prequels. It was just it was a joke, you know, it was a lighthearted joke. Good, and yeah. now uh, now I feel like it would be feeding the. The, be taking, the some people message. would take it very seriously. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't want to take that back in. Um, so in this episode, we yeah, like the before going in, we're going to talk about what we want to see happen in the final movie. Of course, we're going to discuss all of the characters and what we think is going to happen to them. Um, we're going to focus primarily on what we actually want to happen and discuss that. And then at the end, if there's any after we've gone through all of that, and then if there's anything that's like you actually think it's going to happen that's opposite to how you want it to go then we could talk about that but i thought for this episode it would just be more fun to focus on what we actually want to happen given it's not only the end of the trilogy but also the end of the the saga as they're of course promoting it as a thousand generations live in you now We're going to start with 
Poe Dameron, and we're going to use this as a tie-in to something that we didn't get to with last, last week's episode because it was going for so long, of course. We was originally like, we're going to talk about Resistance Reborn. What a book. We'll discuss that. It'll tie in very well to the Last Jedi episode. Yeah, that wasn't going to go too well, was it? So, <laughs> Poe... Well, it would have worked, mm, except we talked a lot. <laughs> literal two hours later. Yeah. No. It would have been like a four-hour <laughs> episode. So, okay. I'll, I'll say for this... Uh, we're, we're going to go mild spoilers with Resistance Reborn. I want to talk about some certain plot things and whatever else. I'm not going to go out of my way to, to spoil everything, but if you care about spoilers for that book, then um, skip ahead 10 minutes or whatever, I, I guess. But um, So you are finished it now, Kieran, haven't you? Because yes. I think last yeah, time I'm you finished. hadn't finished it, so it probably worked no, out. No, I'd finished better. it for the last Jedi episode. I think it was the Force Awakens episode I had oh, okay. finished it for. Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. finished it now. So the book Resistance Reborn uh, released early November, uh, November 5th, 5th, it says here. There you go. That was ages ago. Uh, Rebe- Rebecca R- Roanhorse is the author. Um, and it's basically a prequel to Rise of Skywalker or an epilogue to Last Jedi, however you want to view it. I would kind of view it as more an epilogue because yeah, it takes place literally after The Last Jedi, like basically moments after, and then just kind of is like, well, what happened now kind of thing. Whereas, of course, we know there's going to be like a year-long gap after the end of this book before Rise of Skywalker begins. So I'm like, it's not really a prelude, uh, prologue. It's more no, an epilogue. because it so. spans like a couple days within that. After that, it doesn't, like there's still a large chunk of that year after the end of this book that, that is still left unknown because of it. Yeah. And the one thing I'll say for this book is much like how I went into Rogue One after reading the Catalyst novel, novel, which completely enhanced my experience of watching that movie, I feel like this book enhanced my last viewing of Last Jedi because I'd finished reading this by the time we rewatched that. But I also assume it's going to change how I go in and view Rise of Skywalker as I'm sitting there and watching it. With that said, I wouldn't say that it's necessary reading or Definitely you won't not. understand the movie, but it's like the, the book just presents many character beats, especially for like Poe, that I think are going to be really uh, relevant coming into that movie and what's going to happen. Um, and we'll start there with Poe. So the book very heavily focuses on his regret and how he feels with failing everyone with what he did in The Last Jedi and with how he uh, basically caused the deaths, or he blamed himself for the deaths of so many people for what he did in Last Jedi. And that's that's really what this book heavily focuses on, which is him dealing with that, overcoming that. There's one really fantastic scene where um, they're starting to kind of gather up some forces uh on a ba- oh, I should pause here and get for, for people that don't have so the, the publisher's summary. I should have read first. Sorry, the resistance is in ruins. In the wake of their harrowing escape from Crate, what was once an army has been reduced to a handful of wounded heroes. Finn, Poe, Ray, Rose, Chewbacca, Leia, Organa. Their names are famous among the press words they fight to liberate. But names can only get you so far, and Leia's last desperate call for aid has gone gone unanswered. From the jungles of Ryloth to the shipyards of Corellia. The shadow of the First Order looms large, and those with the bravery to face the darkness and scattered are scattered and isolated. If hope is to survive, the Resistance must journey through the galaxy, seeking out more leaders, including those who, in the days gone by, helped a rebellion topple an empire. Battles will be fought, alliances will be forged, and the Resistance will be reborn. Um, so when they, they, they set up base on Ryloth, for because Leia knows someone there from her past. I will say also this book is basically Avengers Endgame for anyone who's been reading Star Wars canon novels and comic books and everything, like or video games, literally everything. This this book literally everything. connects yeah, it just brings the most together. shit. It's it's kind of crazy. It's like you know those characters from Star Wars Battlefront game. Yeah, they come in, in uh, over here. You know uh, Leia's. Lay one of Leia's books where you get introduced to like she makes a friend on Ryloth, all that sort of shit. That's going to come really relevant here. You know, one time the, uh, was it the, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, but the, the Leia one that was basically set where she was in Parliament and all this sort of stuff and um, people find out her daddy was Vader and then of course she gets in, everyone like kind of turns on her. Uh, Bloodline, that was the name of the book, sorry. Bloodline, like one of the politician friends she makes in that, 
that's going to be super relevant to this. Like it's comic book characters, everything. It's like, they're all coming in. Uh, it's like, oh, you want to know, like, Snap Wes- Wexley, you know, that character that's from The Force Awakens that wasn't in The Last Jedi? Yeah, well, he's, he's been off having these adventures in the comic books. Oh, that's going to be really relevant to this. These cast of characters, that's going to be really relevant to this. Um, the comic book, we get introduced to the fact that um, Wedge marries and, like, retires. That was, like, introduced, like, two, three years ago at <laughs> this stage. That's going to be super relevant for this. Uh, so it's basically, like, the end game of Star Wars canon. Well, for this period, I guess. Um, yes, yeah, so, but th- there's a scene for Poe that's really good where they're set up on Ryloth. They're starting to gather some people up to, to, to form the resistance again. And by, I mean a handful, literally like probably like 20 people or something. Yeah. It's and they much. all, and I think like Poe like tries to give some sort of command and they all basically turn on him. Well, not well, properly turn, but. Are, two people are having a fight and he gets in there, breaks it up, starts to take leadership of the, the people there. Um, tries to take leadership and then basically a lot of them, one person in particular, is like, why should we listen to you? We know what happened on Crate. We know what happened. Like, yeah, like we, we know, know what you did. Yeah. yeah. And the way it's written and the way it plays out is really good because they it, it shows that Poe is like, he has to be like, yeah, I did that and I'm really sorry and I regret it and blah, 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 blah. And eventually he does this like really rousing speech and gets everyone to, uh, to, to, to join him somewhat. So I, this novel more than anything else kind of plays into, I guess my number one theory I had coming out of last Jedi, which at the time, because of Carrie, obviously I said that the crawl would open and say that General Poe Dameron now leads after like, uh, has passed, blah, 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 blah. We now know that's not going to happen, but I think, because obviously they're still using like Force Awakens footage and reworking it, that we're mostly still going to have Poe as the leader, and Leia's just going to be there as like. She even even what towards they can work in. even like the end scene of the book is very much like that, where Poe is the person, you know, leading the the final rousing speech to the rest of the resistance. He's the one talking to people about their futures and kind of giving information and people are coming to him to give it to get information and and leia just kind of you know is is is, sits back a little bit more and just kind of watches and appreciates poe's you know growth throughout it and i think that's a large part of leia's role in this book is more her coming to terms with what's happened and also going through with poe and 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 teaching him and continually to kind of push him in the right direction of being the leader of the resistance um, while still at the same time being a very much the heart and soul of the resistance itself. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's like this book really just con- confirms his arc for that movie to me, which is just going to be a continuation of this where he's just in the rise of Skywalker. He's going to be the leader. He's finally going to become a good leader, not a, headstrong run into battle do whatever is necessary he's going to become an actual leader of the resistance and i think that's the big change we're going to see for his character coming into that which is that good because that's it's like he literally goes from flyboy to to proper leader in in, in the thing um before we move on to the rest of the characters that we're going to see in that though a little bit more discussion on resistance reborn are there any particular characters you want to shout out kieran that like stand out to you from the book in particular because straight away it's like ray is nothing in this book really <laughs> ray's nothing in this book i think i'd like to know your opinion a little bit more on finn in this book because for me i get it there's different authors and different writers compared to what we have in in you know last of Jed- last jedi Finn seems almost like a very different character throughout most of this and i don't know if that's just because we only see finn really through Poe's eyes for most of the time like him and and there's very little um why am I there's very little Rose in this book as well like I think Rose was very much a more of a background character in this book which I was Mm. quite surprised about and it kind of focused more on Finn's and Ray's relationship or friendship and then Poe's and Finn's relationship I don't like it just felt a little bit disconnected from where we end up on Last Jedi to where Finn is towards the like to in this in what book. way? I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the like. 
even the writing for Finn, there was something about the writing that I couldn't see John Boyega saying the lines, or I don't, I don't, I don't know how to put my finger on it. Like he's very, he's very like action based and very, um, almost at some points he's very ignorant of the world or just like, you know, he has moments at the party that they go to where he's just eating food and it doesn't seem to have he that. Would, I, well, I, I just took that as he's literally never seen that much food. Yeah, and no, that he hasn't. Much- and, but the thing for me is I don't see the movie Finn as that kind of character, if that makes sense, where, I don't know, maybe that's just me with my interpretation of it. Um, but I, it was just very different in my in how I felt. I, I would say that for that, it's like the Finn we're presented in the movie doesn't really get much time to do, like show yeah. that sort of character because it's like Finn in the movie. Like think about the Force Awakens, the, the entire movie he's just in one mode, which is run, 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 run. Oh, I better save my friend Ray, and now I'm fucking spine hurts. Like that is the whole thing. And then the Last Jedi, it's like once again, like better run, better run, better save Ray, better run. And like whereas in the book he's like, perp- this is the first time, and this is obviously uh, one of the big differences for, for uh, his character coming into the next movie. In this book is the first time you actually see him properly on a resistance mission proper resistance like he's there yeah 100 percent. because 100 percent to solely help out with the resistance mission so and he's just more kind of in the moment i guess more as like everything else he's just gotta go gotta go gotta go fuck yeah. this place gotta go gotta go um yes yeah, so I, I think that's part of it but yeah i i had no problem with it maybe the way the writer wrote Finn just didn't work for you i guess that's comes I out of just yeah i just was interested um i really liked how this book really fleshed out the resistance for me, and I hope that's something that carries on into Rise of Skywalker because I guess with the movies, because they have such a short time to to discuss it and to bring it up, that you always get the feeling that the resistance really is Poe, Finn, Ray, Leia. Like there's not, you know, you don't feel you never feel the greater scale of the resistance and who's in the resistance and, and actually having people. And I think the work they did with characters like Shriv, who was previously from uh, the Inferno Squadron books and uh, Battlefront 2's campaign, um, yeah. is, is his sections of the book was so fantastic. Um, I really liked his character and his character growth throughout the book. Um, they bring on a imper- former Imperial commander called Tija Nas, who I thought was a really good, interesting character. And I don't think, I have a feeling she's not going to be in the movie. I think if all. anything, she'll be in the background or something. Even and in it's the one background, those, yeah. she's one of those characters that her physical description sounds like somebody who would be very distracting as a background character because she's so different and out there. In a she's supposed style. to look like a fucking uh, barbarian, I guess. Basically. Yeah. She's supposed to look like a barbarian, have cuts down her, on her arm and stuff. Um, I found it really interesting seeing the parts of the book that we got to see from the First Order's character's point of view. Um, I think it fleshed out a lot of more of what the First Order is and that not everybody in the First Order believes what the First Order is doing badly, is doing wrong, and that, you know, them blowing up the New Republic is something that there's no real confirmation on, so a lot of people are unsure about that. Um, and seeing have and seeing them grow to more things like the collective which i don't think we mentioned in rise of skywalker but no that's a that's a new thing i believe yeah which which is a completely new thing it just like it just seemed to add so many elements to this that excited me and i hope stuff like you know snap wexley had such a interesting character arc in this based on his parents and, and i'm a little sad that for reasons in the book we won't see Wedge or Nora in could be misdirect, could be misdirect, but from, <laughs> from, from I don't from, want to get people's hopes up because, like, I know there's like a there's a very like niche group of like Star Wars fans, like OG Star Wars fans who love Wedge as a character. And I know a lot of them, like, I, even when The Force Awakens come out, I would see people on like Reddit and stuff being like, they better bring Wedge back. They better bring Wedge back. All this sort of stuff. And to a lot of people, they're like, who the hell's Wedge? Why the hell do I care? Who's Wedge? It's like, he has a couple lines to, uh, you know, in the last movie, talk to 
Luke and whatever else, and that, that's cool. But for some reason, it's just one of those characters that people attach to. He got fleshed out in the aftermath books and some other things, and uh, which is why I kind of like him now because they they fleshed him out in those books and like he got tortured and all this sort of stuff and like. He, the way they like delve into his, his psyche in those books and like you know like the dude's been through the fucking like he's been through a war like <laughs> you know like he eventually retires and is like i'm done and i like how they they give him that and then in this book they kind of semi bring him out of retirement and then by the end of the book they're like and they're like no nah, this we're, we're too old for this shit we're gonna go do something else but um he's for, for, for people who don't know obviously wedge is wedge is married to um, Snap's mum, and that's how that whole relationship worked. And Snap Wexley is played by um, the guy from Heroes, Greg Greg Greg, Greg, Greg Grumberg. Yeah, yeah, Greg Grumberg from who is in anything that JB, JJ Abrams done because apparently they grew up with one another since I was like eight or something like that. So he's always in everything, and he disappeared in the Last Jedi. <laughs> it wasn't in the movie, and I was quite disappointed because of course I was reading the aftermath books and all this sort of stuff, and then I watched the Last Jedi. I'm like the fuck is Snap? Like, because they made him into a really interesting character in that. And as soon as they announced he's coming back for this, I'm like, I mean, of course he is because JJ did it, but he's such an interesting character in the books. And I think in this, he's such an interesting character. Um, yeah. How- and it, it, like, it's just the, the length of this book goes because it is that Avengers Assemble kind of Star Wars book in book form, though, that we just get so many characters and it feels out like I was so much more interested by the members of pose black squadron because like reading more about them and it makes me want to go back and read them appearing in other go buy that comic uh it's all of poe dameron's comic book run go yeah pick up those like graphic to, novels. to read that and then to see where it answers some really good questions about here's where we're gonna find people to help us it answers questions about where why didn't anybody show up to help them on crate yeah so that's um, the i guess that's to pause on that for a sec one big thing of course from last jedi was why the hell didn't anyone answer of course in that movie lay is like no one cares hope is lost blah 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 this movie basically says eh, their signal was being blocked or in combination with the fact that the first order was so ahead of the resistance potentially trying to gather allies that the first order actually sent out and tracked down all of the resistance's potential allies and started preemptively taking them away and capturing them or killing them is basically what this book says. So that, that kind of answers the last Jedi thing. It's like, why didn't anyone answer Leia's call? They were all either dead, locked up, or maybe some level of like close ones. The, they could say the First Order was blocking their sim- signal a little bit or something. But either way, they, they, a lot of this book focuses on the idea of the First Order tracking down people that would be willing to help the Resistance and locking them up and killing yeah. them and so on. So I don't think there's, any, like, there's anybody in particular I want to talk about further. I think as a book, it does overall enhance the it enhances a lot of things like even just down to the smaller details of i went back and watched the opening level of jedi fallen order after reading the book because a large part of uh, a section of that book takes place um then, yeah on that and the Junker monster Island. the monster that you see in that game at the start is a monster that appears in this book yeah and the thing is my brain for whatever reason hadn't clicked to the monster when I was playing the <laughs> when I was playing the game the first time because I was more looking at the ships and being marvelled a bit being in Star Wars the first time. And then when I watched it, I'm like, holy fuck, how have I not seen these monsters everywhere? Like, what the truck? What the fuck is going on? But um No, I think I think it, it fleshes out the resistance in such a good way that it, it kind of makes me Sad a little bit that we're not going to get the resistance as fleshed out in the movie just because of time constraints. So mm. I hope there's some of the characters are still used and are still present. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a good lead up to Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I, it's like one of those things. There's only so much time in the movie, and as much as I care about it, do uh, does everyone everybody. else care about yeah. it as much as I do? Much like the politics in Star Wars, and the answer is like nine times out of ten. No, no, no one really cares that much. Um, I do want to shout out like one, once again, this is spoilers. I mean, this whole thing's been spoilers for the books, but there is a 
character that shows up in the book that I thought was quite interesting that may show up in a uh, in the movie uh, simply because, like, although they've been in the book previously, they're not like you wouldn't. They could have them show up in the movie, and you don't need prior knowledge for them to be important. And then there's the character of Ransom Castafro uh, or Castarofo or how the fuck you say his last name. Um, he's a character that showed up. That I was saying before, showed up in the Bloodline book, and was this in that book actually outed Leia and was like super against Leia. And then they become friends by the end of it once they get to know each other and whatever else. And then he's captured in this movie, uh, this book, movie, whatever. They all play it like movies in my head. Um, he's <laughs> captured in the book basically because the First Order assumes that he would be willing to help out the Resistance. And then spoilers by the end, they, of course, get him and Leia and him have a cool reunion, which is great for fans of the books and everything. But um, he could show up for sure, I think. Because it's like if they if they introduce a cast of new uh, heads of the resistance in the movie. They would have to. It, it would even you could be have him the. There. <laughs> um, you could have him there and her friend from Ryloth, who. Um, yeah, I forget his name, but they he leaves with them at the, the and end. And he of ended the world, up yeah. leaving with them. So it seemed to be that there were in the book those nods to these people are going to be the new leadership. Like that's that's part of the reason why I was disappointed that Wedge, the Wedge arc played out himself because starting from reading it from his point of view, I was like. Oh, that's going to be so cool if Wedge is part of the leadership in Rise of Skywalker. And at the minute, that's not going to be the case. So, yeah, I think it's it's laid some good fa- uh, groundwork for Rise of Skywalker. Another character that shows up is one that's actually been in the movies prior, which is Carlist Riken. He shows back up in this book. He was a character that was in, um, he's actually from Alderaan, and he shows up in Empire Strikes Back, and he's on the Hoth base as one of the commanders there. So they have a real actor that's played that character before. He shows back up in this. Um, Leia's like, cool, glad to hear from you. How's it been going? He's like, yeah, I kind of retired and all this sort of stuff. Um, And then the one other character I do really want to bring up as basically top five easily favorite expanded universe characters that they've yet to bring into live action. And if I want to throw out my number one, like, if they could bring any character and tie it into the, the last movie, it would be this character, and that's the character of Ray Sloan, which isn't in this book, but they do mention her indirectly uh, several times. Ray Sloan was the head Empire character in the Aftermath trilogy. She showed up in um, the first book where they introduced Kanan and uh, Hera before they even started the Rebel series. She's been in lots of stuff. She's been super important in... Um, all of like that whole battle of Jakku and everything. And then the last time we saw her, she took a bunch of fucking star destroyers and she fucked off into the, the outer regions. And I a hundred percent believe of course, we're going to explore the outer regions in this because that just seems what's going to happen. I, 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 a lot, in a lot of ways, I feel, I wish I had the time to reread aftermath because a lot, all of those books are like dealing with the emperor's pan, plans post his death. Like that's a whole series and a lot of it's like oh fuck off to the outer regions fuck off to the outer regions ray sloan take out here you know all this thing bell of jacu all this sort of stuff it seems like really important now but if one character she would be quite old she would be like you know 60 70 i don't know somewhere around there but still just saying if i could have one character show up and be like <laughs> that would be like if, if she shows up as like a, a commander or something like that that's been hiding out palpatine or whatever in the outer regions and they bring ray sloan, sloan finally in i'll be like yeah, I know heaps of people are a big fan of her too because she's she's always been shown to be such a interesting bad guy, I guess, because she's not just like evil world. Like she's like, yeah, I believe in this stuff. Were you surprised that there was nothing in this book to build up uh, Zori Bliss at all? Nah, nah, nah. nah. I mean, we, we don't know anything about her. Whatever else, we, I mean, we literally know nothing about her. We, <laughs> we'll, yeah, we could chuck out some random theories in a minute though. Uh, moving on from the book now, though. So Ash is like, oh, thank God, reading Thank dies. God I can talk. Watching movies, talk. let's get back to it. Yeah. Man, what are we doing over here? I don't even know what's going on. Um, let's say we're going to go through characters. I want everyone to say what they want, as I said, what you want to happen or what you think is going to happen, whatever. So the next one we'll go with is Lando. What, what do you hope Lando's story is in this movie like how does he come back into it what's what's his story arc blah 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 Kieran I don't know what I want for Lando in this like (laughs) maybe like a moment where he they're like they need something or like you know 
they either need something or they're after something and then Leia has a moment of well I know just the person and then it cuts to Lando and, and I hope for Lando we see more of his connection to the Lando that we saw in Solo and make some continuity out of that and I don't think there's any like story arc like I don't want him to die I don't think he needs to die I think he can just you know at the end of this movie ride off into the sunset and maybe we find out about his later life at some point but I don't think there's anything major needs to happen with Lando this movie I don't believe Ash have any hopes and dreams for Lando uh, I hope that the last several years he's been working in a cape factory. No running cape factory, running like a fashion line of capes because capes are cool. Um, but <laughs> really, I just I think I just want a moment of like kind of acknowledging uh, what's her name that's inside Millennium Falcon. Like just a touch or something. That'd be cool. Throwback. Throwback, yeah. That's right. One more time. Okay. <laughs> And this time it would be an actual line instead of just, you know, there being the lines in the in the original trilogy that people like, oh, does that have meaning now because of this and blah, blah, blah. Just an actual line that is definitely, yeah, pointing towards that and making sure, yeah, that's definitely there. Like, that's not something we're forgetting. I want very little from Lando honestly I'm so I, I every time someone brings up the fact that Lando's in the movie I'm like oh he is too like I, I I'm so focused on <laughs> the other characters and new characters and stuff and I I the only thing that's semi-important I guess when I think about Lando for the movie is the fact that even in the why that book was just talking about there's not one scene where the like Leia's like you know who you should go to help and who would be great for our new leadership for the resistance. Yeah, He's never like, Lando. go get Lando. <laughs> yep. So it just, it just makes me wonder at what point in the movie, are they, who's like, get Lando or Lando just shows up. You know what I mean? Like, would it be better yeah. if they had saved somehow saved it as a secret? If somehow he was never in trailers, it wasn't like, it wasn't a thing you could, you know, you could hide. I don't it. Think would it be better Billy as D. Williams a, could keep a secret? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. It would just be, nah, I think because, the, the thing about keeping the secret is it means that Billy D. Williams wouldn't have got his last hurrah to shop at Star Wars Celebration, be part of the press tour in some sort of fashion, you know, all this sort of stuff. He doesn't get to do it if it's a secret. Fair enough. Fair so enough. it's like, you know, the dude's old. <laughs> this, <laughs> the dude's this could, old. This could be his last <laughs> press tour for, you know, big movie Anything. for all we know. So, and, you know, to, to a lot of people, I'm sure he loves that, you know, being out and like getting the people screaming, and yelling in a lot of ways, like. He looked very happy at Star Wars Celebration. I always remember like Star Wars Celebration, someone asked him, he was like, you know, how's it like playing Lando again? And he just like kind of looked around. He was like, playing Lando. I am Lando. Like, <laughs> it was like, and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, you know, you don't get these great moments. And I'm sure that feels good for him as an actor and, for, you know, for fans and stuff. So even if he's only in it for five minutes, it's like he's still got all this hurrah of the press tour that you get to go through. But yeah, I, I, I fully expect him, I actually fully just expect him to just show, show up randomly. Like, I don't think, if if they haven't done in this book or anything to hint at the fact that Leia could potentially go to him for help by now, I just expect him to, by happenstance, like, rock up and be like, oh, hello, lady. Like, you know, like, what's going on here? It's like, what, do you want to join? Or like, <laughs> Yeah, I don't expect him to have a scene with Leia at all. I just... Based on the knowledge of what footage they have, I can't imagine that would. Yeah, they, be it'd be too to hard. Do. I think. I think the the. No, I'll, I'll save it for later in a minute. But I think that most of the stuff we have with Leia, it makes sense for what her story will probably be in the movie, given like what footage they're using. It's like would be way too hard to work in, Billy do William stuff. So it's like maybe he just is literally on the planet they're at at one stage. Well, towards we've the end seen of the movie. we've seen him gathered with what looks like like there was a shot in the trailer was there with him gathered with he's at a resistance be... base or something presumably yeah yeah but that could be like before the final battle of the movie for all we know and like yeah, he's fair. literally showing up five minutes before that <laughs> for, for the first time I don't or, expect much from, or him from he the movie. could be like the owner of the planet they're on <laughs> he's like I won this in a game of whatever it's called. It's a buck. <laughs> you keep following me. I had a perfectly good mining thing, and then you, the resistance shows up. And, uh, 
If, yeah, I, if, I, if they explain what he's doing, I expect it not to be something that's actually bad now. That's one thing I would say. Like, I feel, I feel like I, he, I, he would be a change cap. Yeah, capes, capes would make corner. sense. Yeah, doing some good stuff, potentially, hopefully. Um, all right, go okay, next guy. So next one that I don't really expect much from, to be honest, is Hux. Uh, obviously, he had a much bigger part in The Force Awakens, and then his role in The Last Jedi was comedy relief <laughs> primarily <laughs> like like I, f- I feel like jj abrams really treated the character a lot more evil and whatever else and ryan johnson's view of the character was sniveling little shit of a child and made him into that a bit more um of course we've got jj back in the reins now so things could swing back the opposite way but he can't swing too hard or else it'll just be whiplash you're shaking head a lot over there ash what, what do you have to say what do you reckon we get for i, I want movie? him to stay a sniveling Bitch. I want him to go out like a bitch. <laughs> I just uh, I really I think like Donald Gleason does a great job in as that part of Hux. You know? Well the, the one important thing. You know, factor, I want him to like spend the whole entire movie trying to undercut Kylo uh and then, you know, to get his at the end. The, well the one important factor I'll chuck in for him in this movie is that the only we've never we haven't seen him in the trailers. We have one photo of him that was for Empire or uh, no the Vanity Fair article, I, I think, uh, where he's sitting, uh, he's standing. standing up behind Richard E. Grant's character, uh, Allegiant General Pride. Shout out and to we Richard no, E. Grant. Yeah, he's been great on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I think I he's the he most excited person to be in that movie. He sounds literally the most excited person. Like he did that Twitter video. It's like, man, I just watched, I just watched the screen of Rise of Skywalker. Y'all, you aren't ready. Blew my mind. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he he's been giving this movie some fucking great pr- promotion on Twitter. I was like, I didn't know Richard E. Grant was on Twitter, but I'm following him now because <laughs> he's been quite. <laughs> I've been very much enjoying uh, hearing him talk about Star Wars. Um, and then it was like, like an interview he did with someone asked, like, do you know what happens in the movie? He's like, yeah. And then an interview was like, like you read the script, you know what happens? Or like he was there. He's like, I'm in one of the final scenes. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is Richard E. Grant going to be this Star Wars as Mark Ruffalo? And he's going to start like giving away spoilers soon, but he's seems to be riding along the precipice. I think that's why John Berger put the script behind his, under his, yeah, under yeah, his bed. That's, it's getting too much. Richard E. Grant getting too much press. Yeah. Uh, but the thing I always think about for that is that, like, Hux is standing behind yeah. uh, Pride, and it, it very much gives the impression that Pride is, of course, the more important uh, character in that thing. Tell you what, um, that is a totally Kylo Ren power move. He's like, I'm going to put someone above you. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a high position than you. But my thing, my thing of wonder is, and this is my, what I want, because I think it would kind of make more sense. So if Snoke comes back, then I would actually see Hux jump ship. And that's what I think is probably going to happen. Like, like if, if, if Snoke comes back and then Kylo doesn't join Snoke in whatever fashion. Do you fashion, think that's likely? Huh? What? Do I don't think likely? Hux is the, I don't think Hux jumps jump ship. I think the second Snoke shows up, um, the second, Palpatine, Palpatine shows up. Okay. Palpatine, not Snoke. Oh, okay, the, Palpatine. Okay, I'm saying the wrong way. Sorry. Uh, the second Palpatine shows up, I think Hux would jump ship and get behind him because he'd be like, that's more like what I know from Snoke. I'm yeah. getting behind him. I like and he hates Kylo. Man. Fuck you. And then Pride could be someone potentially from the remnants of the Empire, Empire. that's been hiding old fashioned. That's what I think he is. So that's why I think. That's where I think I'm kind of going with all that, and that leads me to think that so you're Hux thinking will there's a- three factions in this movie. Yeah, that's been my thing. I would I think for that. a while now that yeah. the, the that it's like because since I've, the trailer, since that last yeah, since, trailer, yeah, popped out, and you'd already been, you know, mutterings about your the Empire ships had you know bunked off, and since Palpatine's voice was in the original initial trailer. I think it all links up very well um, to to state that it does seem like there will be three factions. I'm leaning very heavily on a lot of like the aftermath books and stuff, and going, "This has to mean something, surely!" Like <laughs> it's been years. Can it mean something? <laughs> they fucked off to the outer regions. Please tell me it means something. It's been so long. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm going there. And, and for, yeah, for Hux's character, I I think that would be a fun 
arc, like or just like a cheeky thing to have him basically be like, "Fuck you, Kylo!" Like, <laughs> and like walks across the to uh, to Palpatine, like joins him side. So. Yeah, do you, do you have any thoughts on Hux, Karen? Um, I I like that idea of him going to the Empire. I think he's very much a character that would fit as Hux is you know, as you know as the Emperor's minion, but with power. Um, I think we've already seen that the inkling of Hux wants to be the one that stabs Kylo in the back. I would almost very much see Kylo uh, Hux betraying Kylo in a larger way. Like, there's a bigger moment where Hux, you know, does something to Kylo that before leaving to Palpatine, where either Kylo steps up against Palpatine by himself or something, and Hux, st- like you know, quote unquote, stabs him in the back, um, would make more would make sense, and I think it would fulfill Hux a lot more. Mm. Uh, next character, Rose. So. Uh, <laughs> I was going to make mention the internet's most hated character from the last year. Um, I honestly don't have much theory towards her character because I like her role in the Last Jedi was basically to fulfill a purpose towards Finn's character, in my view. And I kind of like tweeted out this whole thing the other day because <laughs> like she, she's basically the angel on her uh, Finn's shoulder, and DJ's the the devil on Finn's shoulder during the last Jedi in a lot of ways. She's like showing him the world through a different view and lens that he hadn't seen it before, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm really struggling to understand what her character would be in this. But I guess that then comes down to Chris Terrio and JJ writing her and, and an interesting arc for her character. But from where she ends in the last Jedi, I really don't, like, because she's already in for the resistance. She's into the. In, she's in for the resistance because of the way she was brought up, and because of her sister and all this sort of stuff. Um, there, there was an interesting one of the. They did this whole bunch of like sort of prequel uh, comic book series recently. Like there was one shots for all the villains and all the heroes, and Rose's one was uh, about her and her sister, where they're like part of the resistance, and they basically hear that their planet their parents have died and their planet's been gone to shit and whatever and they try and steal a resistance ship to just go on basically a suicide mission to kill as many first order people as they can and then leia stops them and she's like well you can take the ship i won't stop you you can do what you want but or you can stay here and live to fight longer to get your to get your revenge on the the first order and all these sorts of things so it's like that comic showed that her and her sister have a very like at least at that stage uh gun-ho mentality sort of thing whereas like in last jedi rose is more properly in the resistance in a lot of ways you know like her sister just died but she's not like doing that she's not like grabbing a ship and trying to get revenge for her sister straight away instead she's literally standing there keeping people from running away that's what she's been doing the entire time so yeah i i i I don't know does anyone have any uh thoughts on what what I think Rose? I don't think she's going to be that relevant in this movie. I think she might have um, a similar positionary role as, say, Lieutenant Connix. It will like I think she'll be there, but she's not important to the plot. She'll be a more side character of the Resistance. Probably in the Resistance Reborn book, she's doing a lot of communications and a lot of you know those kind of roles. Hmm. Um, so I would believe she's, you know, something there. She might, you know, work something out or be an important deliverer of a message or something, but I don't think she'll be anything too significant in the movie. Ash? Yeah, I think she'll be a kind of periphery character. I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see her relationship with Finn in this movie, whether that it seems like they might be setting up like kind of a love triangle thing, but whether they actually There's- follow through on it. There was, like, for me, reading Resistance Reborn, there was, like, no signs of that kind of chemistry between Finn and Rose. Finn and Rose. Yeah, the, that book seems to basically You just go, said it's written from Poe's point of view, you know? They could be it's no, written from Poe's, yeah, but, like, there's a lot of... There's, there's a couple sections where it, it kind of... Yeah, Finn and Rose's thing aren't... Someone literally yeah. asks... I can't remember who asked him. 
or whatever. It might be Poe. It might be Poe who literally asks Finn and like, what's up with you and whatever. And I'm pretty sure that Finn responds and says, oh, we're just friends. Literally says, oh, we're just friends. We're just friends. Because there's a part where Poe walks in. That's what sex say. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Poe walks in on Ray and Finn. Like Uh, talking or having. Talking. to Like having a conversation. (laughs) Not talking. But it. The way the talkies worded is, it was a lot closer or whatever, and then they kind of they were whispering to one another and being whispering to one, another, and they kind of awkwardly break it up when Poe po walks enters. in. Yeah, the, the, and well, that's Ray. also because the book does a lot of like putting emphasis on the fact that Poe and Ray don't really know each other, and Poe in the book is like trying to get closer to Ray and be like, "We should be friends," and like, "You're obviously important to the resistance." Like, <laughs> we should probably talk more. But Ray is like being all secretive to Finn because obviously she knows him quite well and whatever else. And those two are being like whispering or whatever. And then Poe enters, and then Ray's like, "Okay, I guess I'll leave you." All right, bye. And then Poe's like, "Oh, like I was trying to be buddies with all of you. Like, hey, let's like, all no. be friends and Just, stuff." They're, they're fueling yeah. the fire of you know. Poe and uh, Finn. Yeah, the book also seems to put a damper on that, which a lot of the internet got rather upset about. But th- there is one really good scene between the two of them, which someone actually drew into a comic online, which I absolutely loved. Um, there's like one scene where Finn doesn't know how to do up a um, tie. I think it was. It wasn't a bow tie. I think it was just a straight up tie. And then like he's in a room trying to do this. And then like he calls in Poe to help him. And Poe like helps him put on well, the tie. Because no, he has that awkward moment where, because like, Finn's like flipping shit out of frustration in his room, and Poe's locked out of the room. He's like, "Hey, buddy, can you let me yeah, he's in." Like, like, he's like, "Do you want a hand?" <laughs> just like, "Let me in." Oh, fucking! Like he was like properly like um properly concerned about Finn and everything, and yeah, they have that nice moment. But yeah, they definitely Finn, put Finn's to like. Death. They, I think Finn's like. They never showed us how to do these in the first order, and then Poe's like, "It's okay, buddy." Like, <laughs> yeah, I think they um. From that book, though, they definitely put the Finn and Rose to to to, to, to bed. bed. Yeah, like not that sort of bed, but <laughs> but like you know, we're Death friends, bed. bunk beds, kind of. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I d- but it's like also was that like just the author or was she told to do that? We, I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I'll I'll say that I wish there was more for Rose to do because I I enjoy, uh, Kelly Marie Tran as that character. I think she, I really like her. Obviously, in Last Jedi. I just don't know how her character fits for the plot, and I don't know what I want from her character in the plot because I don't know how it works. Uh, next up, yeah, but she she was like a mechanic or something in the film. I can't remember yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what it, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe she could fit like a Scotty cutter role from Star Trek. Like you know, the the ship's yeah. getting smashed up. And somebody you know, does the, somebody has to the um, fix and stuff. Somebody up. somebody still has to repair the radar on the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, That's true. you know, important part of the mission it sounds like which you know she's going to have several scenes like we know there's that one the trailer where Connix is in the background of Don Lol Gleason's character um whoever he plays um who? no the wrong who? Uh, not Dom, not, Dom not Dom Lol Gleason. Gleason. Uh, I was like Connix in a scene with General Hux oh my Hux? god uh, oh, no, Rose Dominic- turn into the dark side <laughs> Dominic Mon- Monaghan Dominic Monaghan he's in the Monaghan how have you said that he, Pippin is. is in the background with Connix, <laughs> and then Rose is also there with Finn, and it looks like it's on the top of the ship during like the whole space horse thing happening, um, and like shit's blowing up all around. So like we know she's. Did you did you know? So there was an interview with John Boyega last week where he confirmed that they're riding on top of the Death Star. What? He says in the interview we're riding horses across the Death Star. Okay. Well. It's definitely not the scene we've seen in the trailer. So that basically, if if that's what he said, I missed this one. And I feel like I've been reading a lot of this interview. Because this they're is doing, this they're, is they're doing, they're doing the like twenty interview, interviews a day. This is like the same interview he did where he talked about the script he lost and everything. But he talks about it there, and I was very interested at the fact that he said they ran it. They were running across the Death Star on these horses because I was like. Okay, oh, fuck it. We'll, we'll skip. I'll go do Leia next, but we'll do her after. Let's skip to Finn because he was after. So we'll do, we'll do Finn. So if they, if he says they're riding horses, then I think that confirms like a, a running theory, which was that the planet that the Death Star's on, which is um, fuck that new new planet. We, uh, mental blanking the fucking name. It was a new planet that we're getting introduced to. Start to pee or whatever. Um, where we see the whole dance party thing happening in the middle of the desert or whatever the hell's going on there. Um, that the running theory was that was going to be also Janna's planet, 
and then on that's the planet they'll meet on. And then I guess that would make sense if they also have the horses on that planet because she like rides the horses and then maybe they chase after Ray and then they end up riding those things across the Death Star, I guess. That's how that would all link up in my mind. Like, because remember how long, I think in the first episode of this, I talked about how um, for a lot of time we've been presuming that the Death Star or what's left of it, because all we, we see it surrounded by water, it's a different planet to the desert planet. But I was saying that like it could be the exact same planet, which would make sense. I've never, I've never asked this. Do we reckon it's the first or second Death Star? It's the second. It's because, the second? I mean, it's definitely the second. It's got the Emperor's throne rune in it. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's definitely that one. The, so the other thing, and of course my running theory, I've had since the, the the second trailer, or last trailer, third trailer, whatever it was, which is, you know, at the start we see Ray running along and blah, blah, like training or whatever. I'm presuming that's the, for, I'm still going Forest Moon of Endor, and my proof, and by proof I mean to add fuel to my fire, <laughs> other than the fact that I really want it to be that because I want to see Ewoks again, is that... In the last, like, uh, big saga trailer celebration thing they did where they had a lot of footage of behind the scenes from the last few movies up to this one, everything, they tied it all in. Um, they had a fucking, literally, there's one second in that where it shows Warwick Davis, current day Warwick Davis, like old. He's got the Ewok suit on and his head's poking out and it shows him reaching up to put the helmet, the, the Ewok head on. What the fuck would he be doing that for if it's not Flash in the movie? <laughs> Maybe Hashtag it's just confirmed. A cameo performance he did at a kid's birthday party. That's that's where Palpatine is. You know, he fell out of the Death Star, landed on Ewok Moon. You know, he's been living with the Ewoks for the last twenty the, years. It's a new Ewok Empire. Yeah, he gave them the ability you, to speak. Did the ability you hear, to grow taller, and they treat him like a god? I don't know if you read the part in the books where the tribes of Ewoks went to the Outer Rim. Oh, in one of the books, they <laughs> also Snoke is actually an Ewok, shaved. Convert. The bit, the only thing we know <laughs> from the Ewoks is in that um that Han and Lando book, Last Shot. One of the main characters in that is an Ewok. Um, oh no, and the aftermath. Sorry, they they confirm that Ewoks are like rented out to people as basically like psych pets, like to talk to, to help to, <laughs> like to cuddle them. Or and like stuff. a like, comfort support comfort. animals. Yeah, yeah. Companions or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Basically that. <laughs> That's, really That's cool. Mm. <laughs> um, um, so it's like Finn. having a little pet monkey. I mean, yeah. Aside from my uh, Warwick Davis conf- confirming proof that Ewoks are going to show up in the movie, Finn. So Finn's art, I think Finn is one of the most interesting characters, in my opinion, coming into this movie because obviously, as I said last week, this week, every other week, uh, people don't understand his story from Last Jedi. I think if you view his 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 arc across those two movies is very very similar. And the thing that gets me super excited about his character in this movie is it's the first time we're going into a movie where Finn is a character that is a hundred percent committed to the Resistance as a cause, and he's presumably going to be one of the higher ups. Like not obviously running the show, but he's one of the, you know like a like Han Solo, he's like a general regarded, maybe I guess like you know. The, the easiest way to put it is that the position we can find him in this movie, hopefully, will be what Rose thought of him in at the start of The Last Jedi. And that would be a really good arc where when she said, oh, you're the Finn, like the amazing Finn, like blah, 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 blah. And everything she thought about him in The Last Jedi was wrong. Like he didn't set out to save the resistance. He didn't set out to do any of this amazing stuff. It just happenstance because all he cared about was saving Ray. Whereas in this movie, we could actually get a Finn that's living up to what Rose thought of him, you know? So I, I think that's really, really quite interesting. And I, I would fully expect to see Finn do some very heroic stuff because, and he's the only character in this movie that's probably going to follow a general like quote unquote hero's arc. Like he's the only one that's gonna kind of follow that story through to the end of this. I expect him to fully live at the end. I expect to do see him do some very heroic stuff. Um yeah. Uh Kieran. Of course last week he was like Finn, blah, don't like Last Jedi. What's his arc? What's I going don't. on? So I want two things for Finn. I want Finn making a decision 
where he chooses the resistance over Ray, where he, you know, has a decision where he can either go and save Ray or do something that betters the resistance. And I want Finn to die. What? I want Finn I want Finn to die because I think that's it's very mean when you say it like that. I want I, Finn to die. To die. No, I think it would be very good for his character arc for him to die not the way what he is- was trying to die in the end of the last Jedi but in a more heroic way. He thought he was going to die heroically. At the I, end of the he last thought Jedi. he was, but like in actually in a heroic way, not an idiot way. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think for his character overall, it would a it would complete a very good character arc where he is selflessly dying for something something that he believes in and it actually feels a part of. But also, I think it would add a necessary weight to this movie that I think they've been sort of missing. There's no, like, I re, 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 why did I say re so many times? I meant to only say it twice. I re-watched Rogue One with friends the other day and they'd never seen it. And I think Loses. the weight, I know, right? I think the <laughs> weight that Rogue One, that, that that is found in Rogue One because they do it, but people die to get it done is something that is slightly missing from the main, this trilogy, other than, you know, Han Solo dies for... I was about to say, Han Solo literally dies in the first chapter. Of Han, Solo, Han Solo dies in the first one, but that's more of a thing between... That's not for the Resistance. Luke died that's in the for, second one. Luke, Luke's not... I don't know, like, Luke... It, it's, it's a Hundreds different type of people of die in the Resistance. Death. <laughs> no, no, but I, that's the thing, right? A bunch Where of planets got people, destroyed in the first movie. Admiral Akbar, people, everyone's favourite character. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but for me... Laura like, Dern's even, character died say, in the second You can movie, even see it. that Laura Burns' character died. And she's probably the only character, like the main character that I'm like, well, that has impact. That death has impact because of how we see her because of Poe's story and everything. But I just don't think there is that weight of sacrifice of what the resistance needs to do to quote unquote win. I would like, I mean I would agree. I mean that- we just talked about Poe being feeling guilty about a bunch of people dying under his watch. Yeah. So. Poe felt guilty, but as an I- audience, do we really care about all those people dying? Like throughout The Last Jedi? Because it's just random quote unquote NPCs. Like, you know, like quote unquote On second viewing we do. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I, 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 I get what you're trying to say that there's not like enough uh, loss I guess to make it feel like the way like Rogue One feels with the odd loss I guess but and I would say that I would be okay with Finn dying if it fit the story I don't think he's going to die because I said as I just said I think he's going to follow the hero story and the hero story doesn't end with the hero dying <laughs> like your typical hero story does not end with the hero dying mm-hmm. it ends with him being successful and Blah blah blah. If I had to pick one character that's going to have a heroic sacrifice or something, though, I would put more money on Poe than Finn. You if see, I, was a man. I don't want Poe to die, so I'm selfishly not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> you want more Poe adventures after this is finished? Like, well, if, if no, Poe sacrifices think- himself, kind of like Laura Dern's character, like it would be somewhat poetic, really. Poetic. Poetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very poetic. Ash, Ash, what do you want? To, what do you want to have to Finn? Because I have one yeah, last I thing I want to check out. But what Kieran said, the first thing Kieran said of Finn choosing the resistance over Ray, I think that's an important thing that he needs to do in this film uh, to show that he's fully committed to the resistance. I just want him to, you know, make some good choices. You know, I want him to say these horses are very comfortable, especially compared to the last animals I was running on. Um, and you know. <laughs> Wanted to I'm beat someone Alex. else over with a, like a bat like weapon again, you know? Traitor. Well, let yeah. me. Here's here's what my last thing I want to see happen because I think it would be very cool. It would fit Finn's character very good, and something they haven't done in Star Wars, and it would fit the whole thing like well as a trilogy. Which is, I'd like to see him liberate quite a few stormtroopers and do some sort of uprising because I think that would work quite well. Like he goes from literally wanting to run away from them to 
returning and being like liberator and being like, you know, like seeing Finn, if, if we could see Finn give some rousing speech to turn a bunch of those stormtroopers, like they stole Against you from other, your yeah. planets. You have no family. You don't know your name. Your name is like TR, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They, you're literally nobody. I'm out here. I've like made a life for myself. I'm choosing to make sure, like I'm literally choosing to fight for something of my own, you know, some really uplifting speech. And then he makes a bunch of stormtroopers turn and come to the, res uh, the resistance side. I think obviously that would be really cool to see, uh, but also it would be really good for Finn as a character, as like a story that would make him literally go from running away to returning and liberating. I think that's a really interesting arc. Uh, and it would make really good use of the fact of making him a stormtrooper in the first place, you know, because that was an interesting choice for the force awakens. Like, okay, what would be a cool character? Like, uh, let's have someone who's a stormtrooper that's run away. That is an interesting character. But then when you get to the final movie, have him liberate. I think that's a, really cool arc and way to potentially go about it and i'd love to see that yeah something we haven't seen it's also something that would make a lot of sense because it's like you're telling me only one you're telling me only finn out of all those people has ever thought about like fuck this shit you know like i, I, I don't i i'm sure a lot of them are so indoctrinated that they I wouldn't consider see, it but yeah going going once again back to that book we see in them that None of the bad stuff is really seen by the f like the people who are in the first order. Like a lot of them don't really see or believe the the true nature of what the first order is doing. They whereas I think there's a very separate thing of like the very high top echelon of the first order being Kylo and what was Snoke and Hux. Yeah, evil very, side. The evil side is very disconnected from the rest of the first order. Yeah, it's like the rest, so like the First Order as a whole to the rest of the galaxy for a lot of people as brought up in that book is like, it's just sort of like a political party and like they're trying to make change and I agree with some of the stuff they're saying, but yeah, they, they have no idea that like they're blowing yeah. up planets. <laughs> like what the fuck's going on over here? So yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, let's go Leia then. So Leia, of course, is hard one to pick because if we hadn't lost Carrie, it would, my whole idea of where her character would go on this would be a lot different knowing that they could just do whatever. Um, from the outset, we've always, they always said that Carrie's biggest role is going to be in this movie. How much of that's changed? I don't know, but they still said that she's going to be in it quite a lot. <laughs> what quite a lot means. I don't really know. I presuming from the footage we've seen and what makes sense, like from a technical perspective, not, I would say that, she's mostly going to be seen in scenes with Ray and training Ray. And that's because they had a lot of extra stuff, I guess, between her and Ray. And then they could fit that in story wise. And I'm quite happy with that. As I said, I'm pretty sure forest moon of Endor that <laughs> Ray's training there with Leia. That's what I'm hoping for. I want to see what I want from Leia. And I don't know how they make this work. Because obviously I don't think they've filmed this, so it would be like a lot of CGI trickery and whatever else. I want to see Leia light up a lightsaber. Like not obviously fighting anyone, but like literally to have a shot of her finally lighting up a lightsaber, even if just for a second, and then like if it's if it's rays and then like she lights it up for a second, just so we have one like cool screenshot kind of grab of like. There's Leia with a lightsaber. She's not fighting anyone, obviously, but there she is, lightsaber in hand. I just think that would be really cool. And that's what I would want from Leia as a thing in this. I, I really don't know if how more to delve into what I want from her as a character in this movie, what arc I expect. I don't expect she'll die because I think that would obviously be very That would be bad not good, Jana. That'd I be... don't think that would be on at all. Um, I expect her to have a scene with Conix in the movie and I expect to cry a lot in the theater. And that that's not what I want, but that's what I think is probably going to happen. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you, what are we thinking? What do you want from Leia in this movie, Karen? Um, I don't know. Because I think a lot of the stuff that I would want for her would be really hard to do. Like, I don't, like, I think for me, I think it'd be hard for her to interact with the majority of the resistance. Unless, like, I can see her doing a couple of speeches in front of everybody, like in large crowds, but I can't see her doing many scenes of interacting with 
the characters that aren't your Rays, your Pose. I can't even see her interacting very much with anybody but Ray, to be perfectly honest. Um, maybe a little bit with Poe would be good, but as long as they do her justice and they don't overstep the mark with their CG and, and, and whatever else tricks they could use. Ash? Yeah, I guess just like a final scene with Poe, I guess, as like the mentor to him and that kind of thing would be nice. Uh, in a dream world, a scene between her and Kylo Ren, I think that would be... Because yeah. they never had one so far, so that would be a no. cool moment. But would highly, it, highly unlikely. Would it be acceptable for her, instead of like a quote-unquote death, if she disappeared into the Force like Luke? Um, I think I would be okay with that, to be honest. With like a maybe even from help from Force Ghost Luke, or you know where it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost like the end of Lord of the Rings, where it's very much a oh. it's your time's done here. Like you don't need to be here. Anymore. I would be okay then, with that as long as she, like yeah. she just like she just disappears. Not she's, not she's not killed by Kylo and then becomes one of the forces. No, or she's like, not killed she, by anything. She doesn't actually have a death. She just fades into the if she just like looks at ray or something like that and she smiles and then off she goes then yeah i think i would be okay with that because within like star wars obviously it's like becoming a force ghost is it's like a second life it's not you're dead dead and it's Mm. not not horrible or something like that so i think i would be okay with that but but would you be would you be like yeah that makes sense that leia is able to turn into a force ghost yeah because in my world i've i've until proven otherwise i've canonize that luke did some training with her so all right so the we'll get to the big ones now so you can tie them all in at one or do them separately i think it's kind of hard to talk about them separately i guess because they're so intertwined uh so kylo ren ben solo ray nobody that's officially her last name or solo maybe you know maybe that's the connected thing Ray, oh, no one? Oh, my last it name depends is if he solo. goes. she goes through a checkpoint <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, yeah. let's not do a moment where we have like a will they, won't they relationship and then all of a sudden, bam, they're siblings. No, we're not doing this again. No. That, yeah. They, no, they just, just like the last ones. It was teased name. incest. <laughs> it's terrible. How could they do that? Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ash, let's go with you first. Get out of the way. You're know, talking about them separately, talking about them together. What do you want to happen with Kylo and Ray in this movie? You know, hashtag Ben Demption. I want Ben to come back to the light, you know, give, let go of that darkness, put on like a white suit, you know, and uh, help take down Palpatine. Put on you a know? white suit? Is it? Is he Seth Rollins? <laughs> yeah. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> put on your best suit. Well, you know, yeah. he, he wears uh, Luke's robes from the last film. You know? How about Ray? I know. I, I feel like I want to see her get tempted by Palpatine and the the powers he, he has. He's like, you know, we've seen the touches of uh, Dark Ray, and maybe she could explore that for like half a movie or so. You know, before she comes back, you know, to the good side. Mm, and we've talked about how much we think we're going to be presented with Dark Ray and all this sort of stuff, so. I feel really like it's, in we- the end, it's probably going to be like he shows her the power that she could potentially have if she joins that side, and then uh, she says no, and then it's, and then they, he, she cuts him in half. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Just cut him in half. Yeah. Uh, Kieran. She's like, we have to put you down for good. Just keep cutting. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope that Kylo and Ray's stories kind of mirror each other this episode i think kylo starts getting more drawn towards the light side and ray getting drawn towards the dark side and i think the movie kind of goes towards the two of them realizing that they need to work together to defeat palpatine and then them becoming the first force users that find true balance in the force both equal to light and dark and find that that is what's supposed to be like they're supposed to have be balanced between the two they're not supposed to lean one way or the other and that be like the future of whatever the quote-unquote jedi or whatever they decide to do 
be that in the end is that they need to have balance in themselves not just pick one or the other yeah i think uh very similar i think of the mirroring storylines is something that i think we're, we're going to be seeing especially because of the trailers and everything and i think that makes sense obviously because you get the um you know we've pointed out how ray in the trailers looks very angry all the time and all these sorts of things whereas kylo is the one that looks more calmer and whatever else is going on there um i think obviously hashtag ben Demption or have whatever <laughs> version you want to use for that is what's going to happen and i think a lot of that comes down to like that's just star wars like it is like the the original thing was just all about redeeming anakin and whatever else and at the end of the day this movie has to have a happy ending it's not going to have a sad ending so uh, even if kylo dies amongst being redeemed i still think obviously he's going to be redeemed although i would say i want them both to live i don't want kylo to die because then i think like if we're saying a lot of this trilogy has to be about making change and like fixing all of the things that didn't happen with luke and whatever else so they can finally be this proper balance i think having kylo be redeemed and then having to live in a galaxy and face the consequences of his actions and like having to deal with that that's a lot better than just being like oh and in his last few moments he turned to the good side then he dies you know because then that would just be very much obviously anakin all vader's. over again yeah, yeah Va vader's thing all over again so and the idea then that you know like he comes to a good side but then obviously this wouldn't be handled in the movie well highly doubt it would be handled in the movie but maybe they could explore it in like a, a book or something after it's like okay look dude like <laughs> you kill all these people and you did all these messed up things. Okay, well, now you got to actually pay for your crimes and these people they are going to... You know, they have said Oscar Isaac, uh, Daisy Ridley and John Baker aren't coming back from... They've specifically said, but they haven't said anything about Adam Driver. So, spin-off series about Kylo Ren redeeming himself even more. Sitting in prison, doing his 30 years. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've already seen what happens when he goes undercover as a boss on the Star Killer. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. And... Uh, I think the the thing for this about me, uh, with me personally, is that so straight out coming out of the Force Awakens, I was like, "Fuck this guy, <laughs> fuck this character." He killed Han Solo, like get the hell out of here. And then because I remember, and then even, you saw Solo, and you're like, "I understand." No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I changed my mind after the Last Jedi. There was a lot of people before the Last Jedi that were already on like hashtag Ben Demption, obviously. Um, I was totally against that at the time because I'm like, how can this guy be redeemed? Like this. And I think a lot of that came down to in The Force Awakens, he's basically just presented as evil dude. Like, there's not much more to him. And then, of course, it's in The Last Jedi where we get a lot more to that character and learn a more, lot more about him. And by we, I learned more through the books and comics and whatever else, all, the, all this other stuff. And then the more I got brought over to the light side or bad side, depending on which side the fence you sit on. But um, the idea of redemption just being like super important to Star Wars as a story and if he's not redeemed it's like what was the point and it, like what was the point of han's death if it's not if he doesn't redeem it then because if he is redeemed at the end and he comes back to the good side then han's death actually was meaningful like even if it even if it didn't make a difference right there and then but if they can show that one of the factors that leads to him like you know even if they just have like a slight flicker like a flashback or show that he's thinking about his dad or something like that because you got to remember in those final moments when han's falling like he's not angry or anything like his last thing is literally to like put his hand on his son's face and be like i forgive you and then falls to his death or you know so like it's not yeah he forgave him in the, in that moment i think that's mm. if they redeem ben then that moment will have a lot more weight to it when you rewatch the movie and everything like that you know so it'll make han's sacrifice mean so much more um for ray i definitely feel like we're going to start the movie of her being a lot more aggressive and exploring the force and whatever else because and they kind of tease that in the resistance reborn book or whatever and like even if Leia's like training her I feel like she's going to scare Leia much like the way she scared Luke because she's going to be more willing to uh, tap into dark side type powers and whatever else and be like it's fine like I went into a waterhole once and touched this mirror that was apparently dark side or so Luke said but here I am and fine like dark side stuff's good and Leia will be like well you can't do that and she'll be like well I've done it before like <laughs> you know like I I've tapped into this stuff it'll be perfectly fine so and then you yeah, maybe maybe she slips too far and 
by the end of the movie, you, you have Kylo balancing her out and then you have Ray helping balance her out. I, I don't want a story where it's like one of them saves Ola. I just think this, I want a story where they both hit each other at the same time. And then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not like a big, like Raylo super fan or whatever. I'm open to them. Of course, by the end of the movie, becoming a thing i guess like, i'm okay with that if, if that's the, the way it all goes um but i think if i just i just don't want a movie where it's like ray saved her or she saved him i feel like that's like super boring whereas if they evenly pace out and work together to save one another and then that's obviously where you reach that balance because then it's not it's not too weighted they literally saved each other instead of like oh, he saved yeah. him she saved him these sorts of things um I think obviously for Kylo, his mask coming back is super important because like what the mask represented in the first movie was literally him being unable to him being able to get away from the light side of him too much. So he thought that like, you know, put on the mask, pretend to be someone I'm not, blah, blah, blah. Like he was, as we was talking about, like he was really cosplaying the the villain so much more. And in a lot of ways, I feel like we're going to go into this movie and he's still obviously getting pulled to the light side. So, so much to the point that he has to recreate his mask to try and help himself. Uh, well, even what do you think the aftermath of him and Luke's battle was? Because that was the moment for Kylo where he could get his revenge, like do what he actually wants to do, you know, kill the past. Destroy the person that tried to kill him. You know? He, he thinks tried everything, to kill him. Well, he thinks tried to kill him. But do everything in his power to kill that thing, kill that person, and then for Luke to still be too far out of his reach to well, still have... There's, I think, one important thing to bring up here that I think will become important to that because like obviously when you end the movie kylo has no idea I, well i don't think he has any idea that luke passes like leia and ray feel it but like would kylo feel that i don't mm -hmm. think so i don't think he's like tapped into luke in that in, yeah. in that way to feel that in the force but there was a picture that came out in one of the trailers the, t the tv spots where it looked like ray was looking at a destroyed tie fighter or something um crashed on what looked like luke's island looked similar i could see them very early in the movie potentially ray goes back i guess maybe at some point and it turns out that ray uh kylo went there obviously because he would know where he is now that's the thing like uh snoke finds out where he is and all this sort of stuff so he can track and luke it would make sense that after the resistance escapes that kylo's next move was fuck you, old man, I'm going to come find you and kill you. That That's what would make sense to me, I think. Mm -hmm. So then if he goes there and finds he's not there, then it's like, I don't understand what Kylo's goal <laughs> in life is. You know what I mean? Like, what's his goal in life at that point? Like, Luke's gone. Kill Ray or like, but that's the other thing. I don't think he wants to kill Ray. And maybe that plays into why he looks so calm and everything we see him in the movie. Like, maybe his thing now is like, I don't want to kill her, actually. I want to turn her. Or have her join me or something like that, you know? And I think the other thing I think we're going to see built upon in this movie and will tie into the the Rebels episodes we watch for Old Rain Explosion is that, and this one thing I had pointed out to me on another podcast, uh, Sky Talkers podcast, they pointed out, it, they literally, it's you know, sometimes people point out like the most obvious things. You've got all the puzzle people, puzzle pieces laying in front of you and you're like, oh, fuck, I've never, like, looked at it in that sort of way, but now it makes perfect sense. So they talked about this Dave Filoni interview I had seen before many times where Dave Filoni talks about the fact that in Rebels, Ezra, when he's first talking to Yoda in the first season, is actually in the world between worlds, but it's not. he's not fully connected. He's not fully there. So it's not the way that it appears when he actually goes there in the last season. And then there's another time where he, he's there, but he's not really there. Um, it's all about him being connected. And Yoda's there, but Ezra's not quite there yet until the final season. And they're like, well, why like Kylo and Rey and the way that's presented in The Last Jedi is very similar to the, the way Ezra and Yoda and all these other things with the world between worlds is connected um, and shown in Rebels. And I'm 100% now on board, like, they're in the world between worlds when they're connecting with one another. Like, that's where they are. 
and you could actually have them fully commit and go to that because I think one of the most interesting things about Last Jedi is, of course, their connection. And it's like, why wouldn't that be explored more? I want that explored more. That's going to be a very important thing for this movie, I believe. I want that to be a very important thing for this movie. And yeah, it's like if they fully commit and they're more on board with connecting, because of course in that movie, they're like, it's just happening because they say that Snokes is forcing it to. But what if they choose to do it purposely? What if they grow that connection on purpose uh, stronger? And then they actually travel to the world between worlds, a place where they can stand out of out of body experience, I guess, like sort of thing, even though that's what they were doing in Last Jedi. And it's like, it's not like you have to have seen the Rebels episode to make sense of it. But for people who have seen Rebels, it's like, oh, it's like that. It all makes sense. Like it's a force thing. Yeah, cool. You know? Well, that, that connects up with, and what I think supports your point there, is J.J. Abrams recently came out and said, that the force is going to be used in ways that I haven't people haven't seen before and people might find that very confronting or very different to what they used to mm. which could be a way cuz especially with the world between worlds unless you've watched rebels or you are somewhat deeper into the star wars lore that's just a thing that's going to be completely foreign to you like but it's not going to be I think the point thing is if you present it as just a growth of what they were doing in Last Jedi, you don't yeah. need to have seen Rebels. It would just make sense between the movies. And the thing about having seen Rebels is you'll understand faster that it's like this different plane of existence somewhat that they're, they're able to connect through. Um, so I don't think the Rebels thing is necessary for it. That's why... Because when we talked about it, you know, it was all like, oh, do you think this sort of thing could happen in Star Wars? And even I was like, nah, like it would require too much exploration. Like assuming people have seen Rebels, that ain't never going to happen. But the more you put it together and be like, well, if they just present it as the next level of what was already seen in The Last Jedi, there's no reason they can't do it. So now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to say they do it. I'm going to say they literally travel to the world between worlds or however they present the world between worlds in this movie because it doesn't have to look exactly like we saw it in uh, Rebels because it's been presented in many different fashions. And then when you rewatch, like if that's what they say and the way they go, then in Last Jedi, it's like, or the way that was connecting is the world between worlds. It's just like a alternate plane universe. And of course, I've said several, several times on this show, I'm 100% down for weird force shit. I love weird force shit. And I really hope that given it's the last of the saga and whatever, they're like, It'd be brave, and I would applaud JJ the weirder for shit they go. You know, instead of just being like, let's not alienate people, let's not do anything too crazy. The weirder they go, the more I'm going to be like, yes, yes, Didn't space they whales. they specifically yes. come out and say there's going to be weird Jedi for yeah, shit? Yeah, that's, that's what Karen just said. That's what I just said. Thanks for listening to me, actually. Pay fucking attention. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. But didn't they say like it, it, so why are you acting like you, it's going to be a surprise if they do it? Yeah, but... Like really weird for shit. Not like, like oh, to what Ray level flips over shit? a fucking. Oh, that's huge. Like oh, that's crazy for stuff. I mean, that's pretty you weird. Know, like, yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> Would you so going to weird for shit? And I don't know if this is a character you have down to talk about. But we can talk about what 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 is the plan for Luke Skywalker this movie? Because I could see him, and the thing that I would probably want for him is for him to become something that's more than just a force ghost. Whether that becomes, you know, the physical, like the almost a quote-unquote embodiment of what the force is in a later point in the movie where shit's hitting off the fan with Palpatine and between Kylo and between Rey and, and Luke to be there is more than just Luke the force ghost. Well, I would find really interesting. What I want and what I think a lot of people want is like basically force army, force army, ghost army scene of a bunch what? of force nobody ghosts. Nobody wants that. Yeah, bunch of nobody for- has nobody said that in no. the last twenty minutes. <laughs> bunch of force ghosts. I, th- I think having a bunch of force ghosts joining Ray in the final battle to help fight Snoke would like if you've got Luke there. Help fight got Palpatine. Anakin, like the, I think another thing is like if Obi Wan's there, Anakin's there. You know, ever, uh, did I say Snoke again? You did say Snoke again, yeah. Uh, to fight Palpatine. Um, if, if all of them are there, and I think one like little thing to add to this is, you, might, you know that trailer I talked about before where Warwick was in it and all this sort of thing? They showed like barely any of Hayden Christensen in it to the point, like it was so little to the point that I'm like, 
are they purposely ignoring him to try and make people not think about him? Like I'm playing real mind games with these trailers now. Like they showed literally <laughs> so little of him. They showed like, and you can book here because everyone hates those movies, no, but they should, but they don't. They don't, you know, like Lucasfilm doesn't hate those movies. A lot of people that work there don't hate those movies. You know, like Dave Filoni loves those movies. Lots of people love the prequels now. Um, they, they showed so little to the point that I'm like, are they purposely trying to have people not think about him? You know, and then we pull it back to that thing where Hayden Christensen was so, supposed to go on stage and like talk at some Comic Con. And then apparently Lucasfilm was like, no, no, no. Get the fuck off. <laughs> and he, he wasn't allowed to go out and take questions. And I'm like, why are they doing that if they're not afraid of him being asked certain questions? So I'm, yeah, what I want, Luke leading an army of. <laughs> would that take away, would that take away from the, I guess the level of mystique or have the importance of becoming a force ghost? If, if the force ghosts are now strong enough that they can, inter- that, there's so many of them that can interact I, with the world. Only you have to limit what they're able to do. And as we talked about Last Jedi, Last Jedi built upon the Force Ghost stuff and showed that they can interact with the w- real world. They showed later Yoda cast that's thunder. That's Yoda, though. Yeah, I know. But if 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 that's the most they can do, like little amounts of stuff, like or not maybe like they're all in trapped in like one place, like one Jedi temple, and you know that's where they're going. They're going to go free all the Force Ghosts. Come help But me. even, like, <laughs> no, the thing is for me... That, like, Honestly, I don't need to see them do anything other than show up and be there as the symbol of hope uh, to Ray, to give Ray what she needs to fight. So I don't, do you say, that's all I want. So, so you're not thinking Lord of the Rings force ghosts. You're thinking no, 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 uh, no. Harry Potter force ghosts. I guess. Like, like, I want, you know, I want them to show up and give her strength, like, just by being there, not by actually, like, fighting. You're be suggesting there only end. a couple of them, not like the whole Jedi Order that died. Like uh, just like because no, they can't all you, force ghosts. No, exactly. That's what I because that's what I thought you meant originally. No, no, not no, just no, no. your, not just your, you know, your Obi Wan, your Yoda, your Anakin, and there's literally like five like, people that can be there. The thing, the thing that would pop me would be Liam Neeson as Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah. Like who, I who, would. Yeah. I would be so fucking excited if he was there. I'm saying he's there. I'm saying that he's there, Come and on, I want him there. I want the, all of them I there. Will, Mace Windu so, qu- comes down. No, not Mace Windu. It's that purple lightsaber. It says we're gonna kill right. some motherfuckers. <laughs> Here's who's gonna be there. Qui Gon Jinn. He was the first Jedi to learn how to to do the trick, the Force Ghost trick. Um, to well, it's not really a trick. It's basically learning how to become one with the force to the to travel to a different realm to extend your life somewhat. Uh, so he was the first to do it. He taught Yoda how to do it. So we need Qui Gon there. We need Yoda there. Yoda taught Obi Wan how to do it, or told told Obi Wan in Revenge of the Sith, of course. Like I've got something for you to to do in your time of you've got literally nothing else to do. Learn how to do this. So then him, how Andy can learn it, I have no idea. Of course, that's something eventually I want explained, but. Not that's something for another day, but we know he can turn into a Force Ghost because it was shown in uh, Return of the Jedi. So, and then Luke, there's five. There's five people I want there. I want them all there. That's good. There's okay, only five good. people. I want Luke to be more than just a Force Ghost, though, because I think Luke has surpassed the ones that have gone before him. Well, if you show Luke can do more than, like, they can get, they don't need to have Luke, like, turn f- fully and light up a lightsaber and battle. Like, if you could show that he can still, like, if he uses the Force to interact with the objects in the world, that's enough to me to show that like he's stronger than others. I'd like him to kill Palpatine again. <laughs> 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 All right, let me say that I don't think that's going to happen. I don't want that to well, happen. I think that would be I'd silly like to take happen. it away from. <laughs> it would. The thing would be, oh, well, you took that away from Ray and Kylo Ren, but at the same time, it'd be like Luke comes back. He's like, got, he's got a dustpan and a brush. He's like, I need to clean up the mess I made earlier, oh and then God. just kills him with his lightsaber broomstick. Lightsaber <laughs> broomstick. <laughs> it just brushes him off. He's done. No, brushes him away. Just you know, <laughs> that's a that's a big old no for me. Um, <laughs> but I do want the Force Ghost. Um, my army. Yeah, it's five. It's five people. The Force five Ghost people, Squad. Squad. The Force Ghost squad. squad. It's five people who I all think would be willing to do it. If you think yeah, about it, because that's when when you worry. That's when when you say Force Ghost Army. That's when I get worried because then I'm like, no, that wouldn't make that sense. Takes, that ain't wouldn't take sense, and it would take all importance away of how like 
how in tune with the force you have to be to be a force ghost. Like, let's just, you know. You were we're asking for a, weird Jedi power shit. Maybe, you know, Yeah, the but dead. there's weird Jedi power shit, but there's been a there's been a precedence of how like high up in the Jedi force but you know, shit that Ray, ghost, she's a Mary Sue, she's got is. incredible powers, she can do all sorts <laughs> She's of shit. a Mary Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Like you know what I do you want you know what well actually I'll leave it to the last thing yeah all right you leave it for the last thing right okay uh, anyone okay. got any other Ray or Kylo <laughs> things I guess before we move on no all right uh, I don't know what we want from these characters because we don't know much about them but so t- two other new characters that we haven't really talked about uh quickly anything you want from them I guess first one Zori Bliss uh Kyle Russell's character we all they've told her us is that she has a past with Poe. Um, does anyone have any hopes and dreams for her? Better than Boba Fett. And well, Jack that's easy. Just, just be better. <laughs> just be better. Just don't betray them. Work with them the entire time. Have maybe a little bit of will she betray them, won't she betray them, but overall, help them. Do be some awesome. cool shit and use some weapons that make sense. And yeah, don't, don't cop out and, you know. Don't fall into a a star like pit <laughs> and scream. Don't do that. Yeah, I, I'm assuming, and I think what makes sense for her is she's going to be sort of a bit player, and her role will just be like they need her to lead them to somewhere, something, blah blah. I assume that she's going to be some sort of like character that uh, Poe knew before joining the like Imperial Academy or whatever the fuck it's called in this version, um, and like maybe she's gone off and become more of a. Uh, Bounty hunter type. Not a bounty hunter, but mate in that side of the world, I guess, you know, like the scoundrel type character. She looks like a scoundrel given her, 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 her like helmet, everything gives you a vibe of like a bounty hunter sc- scoundrel type thing. I guess. Has a helmet, must be a scoundrel. No, it's just a design. It gives the same sort of thing. Uh, what do you think about, what do you want for Janna? What do you think, what do you want from Janna? Other than the ride horses and look cool. You know, be best buddy, be best buddies with Finn, you know? and make Poe jealous. I mean, that's the way Oscar Isaac talks about. It, it's not very hard. He'll just give it, even if he's not acting right, his eyes will give it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, want- I, I, I get the feeling that's where this love triangle comes in. It's Jaina, Rose and Finn. Yeah, possibly. I, I'll say that anything I want from her is I want her to not be related to Lando. Because <laughs> 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 I just think that would be... <laughs> Um, I think if you have it related to Thin, there, there's a much more interesting story there where it's That's like true. maybe Janna wasn't stolen as a child and obviously like returning to her and like discovering the planet he was actually from and like I'm actually your sister and like then of course Finn would get a last name. I That has emotion and connection to it. That's yeah, fine. That's H- having her simply be Lando's daughter is just like, well, for shits and giggles like there's only two black characters in star wars so you know but the sister thing i would be okay with because i think there's emotional connection and story there kieran is anything like yeah characters not to be siblings i would prefer i would prefer her to be a a big fucking galaxy stop making people siblings Just stop. I, I'm I'm um, I'm with that. I'm just saying if I if she has to be connected to someone, I, I would, just think the sister think- is more interesting. I think it's a good opportunity to, because, and it's sad that they've already said that um, Oscar Isaac, um, Maisie Ridley, and John Boyega is going to be quote unquote retiring from the Star Wars world after this movie. But I think what they then need to do is make sure they also then have some characters established for more stories going down the line after this. Um, even just like a point of reference, not, you know, they as we know, Star Wars comes up with plenty of characters outside of the movies. But I think for her to establish herself as enough to to bring more people into the Star Wars world would be great. Well, I mean, if those horse things are big... <laughs> if she becomes a fan favourite and everyone loves the horses, it's like, fast track a book about <laughs> her planet. Well, you know, part of the Mandalorian's been all about, you know, learning to ride shit. And well, basically. Riding animals and, yeah. Um, all right, any, let's go. Any last predictions or things that you're going to see that happening? My number one to tie it into the Mandalorian is that we're going to see midi midichlorians are going to be mentioned in this movie. Midi 
DeLorean's going to be mentioned in this movie. I don't know where. I don't know how subtle. I don't know how big. But if even if I get a subtle mention, or it, it could be a very big part of the plot, I don't know. But either way, I'm going to say that they're going to mention Midichlorians in this movie. Fuck it. And they're going to make Palpatine mention them. Sure. If anybody's going to do it, <laughs> it's going to be him. I'm just saying. Um, I think 3 is getting his memory back. You're going with that? that uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think based on what we've seen in the trailer, I think it would be a nice... Because uh, this might be one of the last times we see 3PO. Like, I mean, it will be the last time we see 3PO. Uh, uh, in a main movie. In a movie. He'll probably in show up movie, in some animated thing and whatever else. But. Yeah, like him and R2, this will be their last times. I think 3PO gets his memory back this movie. In, in case somehow people didn't listen to that episode where we discussed it, which I think was the first of this season, uh, the trailer, that the, the idea is that in that the part in the trailer, he's getting his old memories returned from pre-wipe. So he would then remember everything about Anakin and all that, like prequel period stuff. Mm. Ash? Toddler Yoda. So you no. think we you think we're gonna say Yeetle? I Yeetl. don't want <laughs> no 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 Yeetle in this movie. Yeah, let me counteract your no. prediction by saying not that in case anyone doesn't no. listen to our Mandalorian show, we call uh baby Yoda Yeetle. Uh there's gonna be no Yeetle in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And no Mandalorian show up here. No Mandalorian. I would go with that as well. No. Okay. Maybe maybe right. the Mandalorian ship might appear. Maybe the Razor Crest might be randomly thrown in this as is they an do. Easter egg. Yeah, Possibly. but I don't. I don't know if that would count. But my other prediction is the Millennium Falcon goes down the ship, goes down in this movie. Ir- irrepar- uh, irreparable. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also. Chewbacca lives happily ever after. I think the book of the wills or the book of the wills <laughs> are gonna play play a bigger part than we might think in this movie. That's one of the things I have the biggest question mark question mark about, simply because obviously those books that she hides away are just such a like far away. Yeah, it's thing. such a small bit. But so but it's like, is that an important thing for this movie? Yep. Is that just suggesting Hey, these are things that still exist, and or was it just a thing that was like, this is show showing the level of mind fuck that Yoda was on at the time, was that he was just so you know beyond that he knew what he was doing exactly. It was like, man, I'm not even fucking anything up. Luke no. just what I want is a scene where they're like fighting the Millennium Falcon or something. I know what will save us, and then she pulls out one of the books and just hits somebody with it. <laughs> John Wick style. John Wick style. Just yeah. Break somebody's jaw with a book. <laughs> I don't. Do, I'm, we're in predictions, but I, I'm gonna. If anyone has any, let, does anyone have any last predictions? Like actual no, legit good. predictions? Uh, no, I'm good. All right, so last thing I kind of want to do. Haymaker wants, and I mean like crazy as fuck thing. Because what I'm gonna ch- throw out that I definitely don't think is gonna happen, but would make me the most excited out of anything is if I got tie-in of Sabine and Ahsoka and all this stuff. No, no not going to happen. Shut up. I said I Haymaker want it wants. Not gonna, not Haymaker gonna wants, I said. Haymaker wants. Crazy wants. Just let me dream for a moment. It could work. They could literally just show up at the end for like a hot second just in the background or something. Fuck you. <laughs> 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 the hell's your haymaker want then? Um, I want a lightsaber duel with Palpatine versus Ray and Kylo. I feel like, like your haymaker wants very closer to being a possibility reality. than mine is. <laughs> it is. It's definitely. It's definitely. But I could see the the Palpatine we get being a very continually being you know a very old decrepit. Palpatine that we got from the original trilogy. I want like having now watched some of the moments in um Clone Wars where, where Palpatine fights. where he fights, like there's the one fight that I, I 
stand that is between Palpatine versus uh, Darth Maul and his, brother. Um, and his brother that is so fucking cool. And I'm like, I just want that, but on the big screen. You know the reason they didn't do that in the movie, just as a side note? Originally in the script they had in Revenge of the Sith when Maul, uh, when Mace Windu and stuff comes in, he... George Lucas originally had it down. There was a massive fight where, much like an anime show where Palpatine's like flipping around the room and, you know, like he's very nimble. Yeah. And it was like always supposed to be this whole, like he looked like old, but then he turned into be this very nimble guy, which is how they do it in Clone Wars. But for whatever reason, on the day, he was like, uh, nah, I can't be bothered doing that. I want to make sure that Ian uh, McDermott, uh, McDermott, however you say his name, um, he can be in every scene. So they didn't want to use like heap of stunt doubles and stuff only for like a couple quick takes. And he wanted to make sure he was mostly in the scene. Whereas of course, if they shot it with like a bunch of flips and stuff, they would have had to make sure he had his hood up and it was like a bunch of stunt men and blah, 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 blah. So that's how they changed it. It's like in an alternate universe, we did get more like Clone Wars, Palpatine level fights and stuff, but uh, now we miss out. However, those fights, are that fight that you're talking about is very cool because from the moment it starts, it literally shows like Palpatine like flip into off a ship and like land and he like runs very fast with his hood over and he's like comes in, lights up his double lightsabers and he's just like, <laughs> and like starts flipping all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> he's very much like, and it's one of those moments where there's not that much build up or anything to it. It just kind of He's just there to kill them. You're like, and you're just like, oh shit, it's on. Like, yeah. holy fuck, let's go. Well, yeah, they're not like, oh, better make sure the villain gets his hot, two seconds, uh, two minute talk about his plan and how much like Darth Maul, blah, 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 blah. It's just or like, they don't even have like episodes and episodes of build up. It's like one minute Palpatine's like, finds out that Maul's back and he's like, better go kill him. Oh, I better, <laughs> I better take care of that. And then the next minute he's fucking there. It's like, holy shit. Yeah. I hope, I, I, I'm not sure if we will actually get that, but I, I mean, I'd be down for watching it. I, I'm interested though. Uh, Ash, if you have one, Big ass fly to the wall, haymaker prediction. Uh, I mean, want, so. I don't have anything. Obviously, Ben Demption, Raylo, that all the jokes and memes and stuff. Um, I would love if they did an end game style credit sequence, which I don't think they will because of history. But I think, like, a cool graphical thing touching on your actor as they go through for the last time. You know, that I think that would be cool. I mean, I know, I know, yeah. So you're saying like uh, big credits where it shows like a picture of that, uh, the characters and actors and everything. I would say that I would put the odds very low. However, if they did it and I would be down for it because it's like, don't just have it be people from this movie. Literally do yeah. a long ass credit sequence with literally all, not well, all of the side characters. You just characters, said but we're going to be bringing characters. all these people back through Force Ghosts and that kind of thing. There's only five people. Yeah, but like, like make the credit sequence not the credit sequence for this movie, but the credit sequence for the entire twelve the saga. movie saga. The saga. You know? So no. have David Prowse credited and um, whoever else, like, like random people, like who are, who aren't haven't been involved since the original trilogy and whatever else. That that would be cool to me. If, if you're talking about like a big graphic credits sequence, make it the graphic secret, make the credit sequence, or maybe do two credit sequences. So that one's first, end of saga credits, and then you go do the normal credits after that. That's just for this movie. That would be But cool. have, your, have your play credits where it's like, yep, everybody sits through them, claps, you know, like chills, yeah. and then the actual credits kick in and everybody can leave because yeah. there's not going to be any after, after credit credits scene. scenes. There's just going to be... It, it's just the end. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I guess my last thing I'll say before we kind of wrap this up is I really want this to have a fina- final feeling. I don't, I understand they're going to leave it somewhat open. So 10, 10 years later, they could do something else or whatever. I, I understand there's probably going to be more Star Wars movies. And, and when they do them, they're going to be like, the whole thing of this is it's the end of the Skywalker saga, but they're definitely going to be, do more Star Wars movies, but I just want this to have a really like, don't leave me hanging. I just want to feel like it's it's actually done. Like if you want to compare it to Endgame, the one the good thing I like about Endgame and the one reason I wish there was no more movies coming out is that movie just feels like it's end, close book. For me, it's a chapter. It closes the chapter on Infinity this saga. section of like it's definitive for this section. Like you know. If if you the thing that I always love about Endgame is that it starts with Tony Stark saying I am Iron Man, and it technically finishes with that. 
in a lot in some ways, yeah. In some ways, and I think having those two bookends perfectly is really good for that sake, but it, it also leaves it so you're okay to move. So on start this movie sake. with uh, a trade route blockade. Ah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Flashback to they randomly find a data cube of one of Palpatine's speeches back at the Senate, and then we have to go revisit the Senate for 10 minutes. They're just cut to Naboo. They're like, what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> They've blockaded us again. Um, all right, so final prediction, <laughs> internet reaction. One word. Do you think the internet reaction to this movie, judged off all the trailers and everything else, do you think it's going to be hot, as in people love it? Primarily people love it. Um, do you think it's going to be cold, as in people hate it mostly? Or mixed, which is, I guess... Yeah, somewhere between Ash, how are you feeling? Uh, screw your words. I'm going to say favorable. Which one does that relate to? It's, it's leaning. It's like mixed, but leaning more towards the positive. Okay, so it's like a warm. It's a warm then, I guess. It's it's yep. it's it's not hot. It's lukewarm. It's, it's, it's lukewarm. Oh god, lukewarm. Ooh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Karen. Uh, I'm gonna go with the cop out answer between the three and say mixed. I think, I think in today's day and age, you're never gonna make a Star Wars film that is renownedly loved by everybody. I think everybody's gonna have problems with it if they want to have a problem with it. I just think, I just think at the end of the day, it's gonna be like one of the things where we don't know where this movie sits for maybe twelve months. Where at least, at least, because I think even now. We, because of Rise of Skywalker, people are re-watching, Jed, uh, re-watching The Last Jedi and more and more people are coming around to, oh, actually, this isn't as bad as we thought it was when we mm. got our torches and pitchforks when it initially came mm. out. So I think, yeah, it's going to be something we have to write out. We won't know properly for another couple of years. Yeah, I'm sitting on mixed as well, slowly because it's like there's so many things in this movie kind of getting wrapped up. It's like if they make Ray like Palpatine's daughter, lots of people will probably like that and like be like, oh, explains her powers. Oh, at least that's good. Other people will be like, oh, I preferred it this way. If they do Ben Demption, makes a lot of people happy. If they don't, makes a lot of people not happy. If they do Raylo, that makes a whole fan base happy. If they don't, makes a whole fan base unhappy. You know, like there's so many things that are either just 50 50 going to swing one way or another and they're going to piss off a bunch of people not piss off a bunch of people and I think at the end of the day that JJ and everyone went into this movie knowing that and they just had to be like don't care even Tell just the, story. the thing even just with the thing that JJ coming out and saying hey there's some stuff in the force that people might not be that happens in this movie that you might not be used to is shows that he is very prepared for this movie to be somewhat divisive or ha- be hotly discussed after it comes out. Hmm. Time will tell. We're, we're literally, uh, <laughs> we'll find out next week exactly what's happening because that'll do it for this week's episode of All Around Explosion. Next week, we're talking about the rise of Skywalker. Um, Holy fuck. The episode will God. probably be not out on a Thursday and more likely out on a Friday. Um, who knows? We'll see how it goes. Either way, uh, our impressions of the movie will come. It's kind of weird to say, but yet that's next week. (laughs) That is next week. Please. And it's the last episode. And it'll be the last episode of this podcast. We will be shelving this podcast along with the thing. Shut up, Ash. Ash is always like, we can't end the show, Dylan. (laughs) You can't retire any of our podcasts. Is it though? All of them have to keep going. All of them have to live eternally. We have to forever. build another podcast feed. Why? Yeah. Why don't we just put all our podcasts in the one feed? No, that would be horrible. <laughs> what a bad idea! And everybody has to subscribe to the same one. I don't. I'm so glad I'm willing to not listen to you sometimes. Um, you can please share the show. <laughs> on social media and tag at Explosion Pod if you're enjoying it. Tell your friends right on our podcast Pod Chaser. Old Rain Explosion is a Darth production of ExplosionNotwork.com which is where you can also find what do you want to watch? A fortnightly movie and TV podcast on a completely separate podcast feed. You can follow me on Twitter at VivaLadil V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L You can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby A-S-H-L-E-Y H-O-B-L-E-Y and you follow Karen on Twitter at Ya Boy Ringo that is three separate Twitter feeds and until next week may the force be with you always <laughs> it's an instinct. A feeling. The 
course brought us together. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. People keep telling me they know me. No one does. But I do. Long have I waited. And now... You're coming together.